All right, so welcome to part two of the moisture and humidity assessment lesson. Um, in the previous lesson, we went over the difference between relative and absolute humidity. So um, remember that relative hum absolute humidity is the actual amount of moisture that's in the uh, air or the water vapor and that's in the air. The relative humidity, remember, is the ratio of the absolute humidity, how much humidity is in the air, uh, relative to the maximum possible um, air uh, moisture that that air can hold at that temperature, right? And so as air warms up, you can hold less humidity in the air, which means you're, as the air warms up, the relative humidity is going to drop um, if the absolute humidity stays the same. And we went over dew point, which is the point at which the relative humidity is 100%. You reach full saturation, and that's also when condensation starts to occur. And that happens as you cool down. Um, you cool air down until you reach the dew point, and then um, condensation starts to occur. That's why they call it the dew point. That's when dew forms on the grass overnight because the air has a bunch of moisture in it on a warm day and then at night it cools down until it reaches the dew point and then the air, the moisture starts condensing out. Then incidentally the absolute humidity does drop because you lose some moisture from the air. Okay, so that's a quick quick review of the last um, discussion. So this um, here we're going to go over um, how to interpret a psychrometric chart. Um, we've already gone over um, what a sling psychrometer tells you. Remember the sling psychrometer is this thing that you spin around and it tells you the um, dry bulb and the wet bulb temperature. Um, and here we're going to look at psychrometric charts and how you can um, interpret them uh, and also some uh, aspects of humidity levels and why we should care about them. Okay, so let's look at our psychrometric chart here. This is there's this is actually believe it or not a simplified psychrometric chart. There's usually more information on it, but this is a little bit simplified just to make it easier to interpret. Um, and there's a bunch of videos and lessons on psychro psychrometry um, in this week's uh, folder, so I'll go over those um, for, for more information. But here we have the psychrometric chart, and you can see we have a dry bulb and a wet bulb temperature, right? So we have our sling psychrometer. Um, we spin it around. The wet, the wet bulb is going to cool down faster than the dry bulb. In fact, the dry bulb shouldn't really cool down at all. And remember, that's because the wet bulb has the, that uh, wet cotton around it. And so the evaporation occurs, which pulls heat from around it, including um, pulls heat from the thermometer itself um, and from the air around it. And so that ends up cooling the wet bulb. OK, so let's say we, we do our sling psychrometer. Um, we get a dry bulb of 80 and a wet bulb of 66. Okay, so what do we do with this psychrometric chart? You can see we have dry bulb here. We have wet bulb and dew point. So I'll show you the difference between those two. Here's your relative humidity, these green curved lines. Then over here is our grains of water vapor per pound of dry air, our absolute humidity. Okay, so we have dry bulb of 80, a wet bulb of 66. So what we do is we find 80 on the dry bulb. We go up, we find we have to interpolate here, right? So we find 66 on the wet bulb line, and we have to find out where they meet, which would be right here. And you can see wherever that falls on this, you can see this is the 50% relative humidity line. So it falls almost exactly on that 50% relative humidity line. Okay. So our wet bulb depression is 14 degrees, right? Which is the difference between the dry and the wet bulb. Our dew point, you follow directly to the left, okay, and that's 60 degrees. So that actually you can tell your dew point as well. And then your relative humidity is 50%. So in the previous lesson, we just looked uh, at the wet bulb depression and found the relative humidity based on that. But as you can see, if you have these readings, the dry and the wet bulb with a psychrometric chart, you can tell a lot of other things actually and you could even tell we could follow this over for the absolute humidity and it would be um, I don't know we don't actually have units over here so <laughs> but if we had units we could tell what the absolute humidity was as well but you can see we can tell the um, dew point is directly to the left okay directly to the left uh, and then this curved line is going to be our relative humidity 
Okay, so that's how you, that's one way to use a psychrometric chart. If you have a sling psychrometer, you're going to have these these two pieces of information: the dry and the wet bulb, and you can tell all these other things from that. So what what if the um, what would it be at a relative humidity of thirty percent, right? So let's do let's say that the dry bulb is eighty degrees still, but now we have a relative humidity of thirty percent. What is that? How does that change all the other values? So we can we can do that too. It's just kind of like algebra, right? Like if you have two variables, you can figure out the other ones. Um, and so in this case, we just need any of these two. We could get absolute humidity, relative humidity dew point, uh, we could get wet bulb, we could get dry bulb, and we could find everything else out. So we have a dry bulb of 80, so our relative humidity is 30%, so we followed up to the 30% line, right, so here's 30%, and then I want you to see if you can figure out what is our um, wet bulb, what is our dew point. So go ahead and try to figure that out. If you follow it straight, uh, you follow it up, okay, so these are the wet bulb lines, Okay, so these are the wet bulb lines. You can see it's in gray. So we follow it up there, and the wet bulb is about 60 degrees. Remember, the dew point is straight across to the left, so it's about 44 degrees. Okay, and you can see our wet bulb depression is 20. Okay, so a couple of lessons here. Number one, you can find any of the other variables as long as you have two of them. But the other other two important things to point out here are what, that as you lower the relative humidity, remember we talked about this in the last lesson. Remember the relative humidity dropped from this to this. The dry bulb stayed the same though. So if that's the case, when you use that sling psychrometer, remember because there's lower humidity in the air, there's less moisture in the air, which means it's easier to evaporate. Okay, and so you're going to get more evaporation on the wet bulb, which means more evaporation, it means more cooling, which means you have the wet bulb um, is going to drop and your wet bulb depression is going to go up. Okay, the other thing is that um, the you notice that the, the dew point dropped from 60 to 44. So from step from the first example to the second example we had a lower relative humidity and we actually had if you were to follow the line across you would see like if you follow my uh, pointer okay we follow here here's for the first part because our dew point was 60 this is our absolute humidity okay it was this much down here this is our absolute humidity so our absolute humidity was lower here than it is here okay so here, if we would have had units, we would have seen that the actual humidity in the air was lower. That was why, that's why the relative humidity is down, okay? And so what that means for dew point is there's, at this, at the second example here, there's less moisture in the air, okay? And so you, it's, you have to cool the air down more to get that to saturation. I'll let that sort of marinate and you think about that a little bit. But as the moisture in the air drops, you have to cool that air even more to get it to be fully saturated. And that's because the cool air um, holds less moisture than warm air, right? So if you have a whole bunch of moisture in the air, it could condense, like it could get really full at a relatively high temperature. But if you have very little, it can condense at a much lower temperature. Okay. And again, the dew point is based on the absolute humidity. Okay, see how they're directly across from each other in this chart. So it, as long as if the absolute humidity doesn't change, the dew point's not going to change. So whatever the absolute humidity is dependent upon the um, absolute, what I say, the, the dew point, excuse me, is dependent upon the absolute humidity. Okay. So you can see they're horizontal. So that uh, it doesn't matter. The point is if you have this much moisture in the air, right, that it doesn't matter if it's 110 degrees or 90 degrees or 80 degrees. It's still a dew point of 70. Okay. Okay. Let's do another uh, example. So in this case, we have a temperature of 90. So dry bulb temperature of 90 and a dew point temperature of 60. So what's the relative humidity? So again, we can use this chart. We find 
uh, there's our dew point of 60. Remember, it's horizontal from the dew point. We have 90 degrees on the bottom. Okay, so the relative humidity, you have to do a little interpolation. You got to sort of curve it up. And we got about 38%. Okay. So what's the um, what's the temperature? So we what's if we increase the temperature to 96, okay, what's the dew point at that point? Okay, so we increase the temperature to 96. The dew point is the same. Okay, it doesn't matter as long as you don't add any moisture to that air. That dew point is going to stay the same. Okay, so again at at 90 degrees Fahrenheit, and uh, a uh, dry bulb and a dew point of 60, we have a 38% relative humidity. So what happens if we increase, what happens to the relative humidity if we increase the temperature to 96? So nothing else changes, we just increase the temperature. So let's look at what happens. So we just move that to the left and our relative humidity drops to about 32%. What if we increase the heat that air up more to 110 degrees? Same humidity level, same absolute humidity. We go up to 110, we're at about 28%. So as you can see, the as you increase the temperature, the relative humidity drops. So again, increased temperature, you can hold more moisture as you heat the air up. If that if the absolute humidity stays the same, the relative humidity is going to drop. That's something that I expect you to remember, right? So if absolute humidity stays the same, the temperature increases. The relative humidity decreases. Okay, so you think about if you look at a warm day and it it's really humid in the morning, like the dew's on the grass, like think of a nice summer day, dew's on the grass, it's really damp. As the day warms up, that absolute humidity stays the same, but as the temperature heats up, the air gets dry. Okay, so the air will dry as the day progresses. All right, so let's go the other direction. Okay. So now, again, our same starting point, 90 degree dry bulb, 60 degree dew point. Okay, we have a 38% relative humidity, which incidentally would be like a 70 degree um, wet bulb. Okay, so that's 38%. So what happens if we, now we cool the air down to 70? Okay, so now we cool the air to 70. So all the way over here, okay. Now you can see that our relative humidity is 70%, right? So what if we go all the way to 60? So 60 degrees, you'll notice, is our dew point. So if we get all the way to 60, we're at actually 100% relative humidity, and that's what defines the dew point. Remember, dew point is the temperature at which you reach 100% relative humidity, full saturation when condensation starts to occur. Okay, so if the absolute humidity stays the same, And the dry bulb drops, okay, and the temperature drops, the relative humidity increases because cold air can hold more, uh, less moisture than warm air, right? So it's just the opposite. You warm the air up, relative humidity drops. Cool it down, relative humidity increases. If we drop the temperature all the way down to the dew point, we get 100% relative humidity, which is full saturation. Again, this is assuming no moisture is added or removed, okay? And then what happens if we drop below the dew point? So think about it. We are 100% saturation. The air can't hold any more. And remember, colder air can hold less moisture than warm air. So what happens if we have air that's already fully saturated, can't hold any more, and then you drop the temperature even more? Like you drop this, what we were just doing, from 60 to 50. So what's going to happen is you're going to actually release that moisture out. You're going to get condensation. Um, and if you're up in the sky, you're going to get clouds to form. If you're down near the ground, you can grab something to condense on, like the grass or you know whatever, cars, surfaces, whatever's around. Okay, so the point is the water is going to condense out. Okay, and so um, this is really important. This is this is what causes clouds to form. This is what causes fog to form. More more down to earth for us inside of buildings. This is what kind of causes condensation to occur. So if you've ever noticed on a, um, an air conditioner, a window unit, central air system, um, on the back, you'll, you'll have a condensate line that has water dripping out. And we'll look at this later. But there has to be a condensate line coming from an air conditioner because 
think in the summer you have all this warm moist air coming you're pulling it in the house and then you blow it across these coils it cools it down what well, can cool it down to the point that it can cause condensation to occur so you'll see every air conditioner needs to have a condensate line and then it has to have a drain uh, because you're going to have this condensation because you take this air outside let's say a hot summer day 80 degrees pretty humid that air you pull some of that air in you cool it down below its dew point it's going to cause condensation okay and so that's really important um, for uh, moisture management in buildings and there's a couple reasons that this is important so really big one is comfort and this this is part of the psychrometric chart that's posted in this week's lesson and you can see these comfort zones and I'm not going to go into a whole lot of detail here because all you need to do is figure out your dry bulb temperature and, and any other variable, right? You can do your wet bulb, you can do your absolute, you can do anthropy, you can do all kinds of stuff. But anyway, if you take your like dry bulb and your um, your wet bulb, right? So which again is these diagonal lines. And if you wherever they meet is it in this zone, it's really hard, probably can't see it. But that's your winter comfort zone. This is your summer comfort zone. Okay, so this is important, you know, this is based generally where people are comfortable, that it's a mixture of um, temperature and humidity. And if it's too dry or too moist, it can be uncomfortable. But condensation, man you know, water management, water's a killer, as uh, my friend likes to say, you don't want water in a building. You don't want standing water, you don't want any water at all. Um, so you want to prevent condensation as much as possible. This is also an important consideration. We'll talk about this a little bit later on when we do HVAC sizing, uh, because you do, it's not just about heating the air. It's about um, all of the heat that's required to sort of vaporize um, the uh, water, right? So there's, remember that latent heat transfer. Anytime you have condensation, there's a release. And anytime you have evaporation, there's a, um, you have to remove heat from the air. Um, and so there's, your HVAC system has to uh, compensate for that. Okay, so the, the summary here is that from the first two, these last two lessons is that evaporation causes the cooling of the wet bulb with a sling psychrometer, right? So evaporation causes cooling. That's really important to know. As the relative humidity in the air increases, you get less evaporation and that, which means the uh, wet bulb will not cool down as much. And so your wet bulb depression decreases as relative humidity decreases right so there's less moisture in the air you're going to get more evaporation which means you're going to get more cooling and a bigger wet bulb depression that's how a sling psychrometer works remember as temperature increases all else being equal relative humidity decreases as temperature as temperature decreases relative humidity increases these are things i expect you to know remember that when temperature uh, reaches the dew point you're at 100 percent relative humidity um, you reach full saturation and that's when you get condensation to occur um, and that's again what causes condensation to occur 